the agenda to rebuild the western region into the new industrial hub of Ghana. To better harness the rich resource potential of the region is shifting into high gear. And today, after almost four years of enduring strategizing and hard work, more milestone projects for the smooth takeoff of the Dream Industrial Hub are ripe for commissioning. With the military and security issues sorted out, President John Mahama spent the rest of the day and the next couple of days reaching out to the people of the Western region, interacting with them and making sure that they are in touch with the massive investments pouring into the area and how these are set to open up tremendous opportunities to them and make life better for all. We'll make secondary education progressively free without jeopardizing quality. The talk of drastically revamping Ghana railways to a status reminiscent of the times is now walk. The potential of railway transport to once again open up the western corridor of Ghana to significant business opportunities has never been lost to this administration. With location, as it was called then, gradually coming to life, those who know know that an economic giant is rising. This government is committed to revamping the railway sector. You had a special relation with Professor Tamils. He came here and he gave you his word that under his administration he was going to do everything possible to put the Ghana Railway Company back on its feet. And as the person who has taken over the responsibility after his untimely death, I wish to make you that same pledge. We're not going to remove rail lines and sell them. We're going to work and put new rail lines. At Takradi Polytechnic, President Mahama took the opportunity to commission the massive faculty building for the School of Applied Art. The newest of government's investments into the youth on campus with a view of enabling quality teaching and learning experiences. To get an assistance, we managed to complete the gigantic School of Applied Arts there. While it has added some aesthetic beauty to the infrastructure skyline, it has improved tremendously the space available for quality academic work. Another milestone this institution has dropped in the last two years is the establishment of six ultramarine laboratories for the training of the critical mass of skilled, competent technicians for the emerging Ghanaian oil and gas industry. academic progression in the polytechnics, we must change convert them into fully fledged technical universities. In order to be able to do what we intend to do, we need to upgrade faculty and infrastructure. And so over the next four years, we are going to work with the polytechnics to upgrade the faculty by providing scholarships to lecturers in various departments to work upgrade their academic skills and come back. Yes, we will introduce progressive free senior high school education, but we will do it in a manner that does not sacrifice quality. For technical schools, for secondary schools, 
for universities and other institutions. We're going to build houses on campus so that we can move more of the lecturers and tutors and teachers onto campus. It has been a long day, but the people of Takadi will not retire for the day until they have heard from the man of the times. Takadi ye kwa echese se oka Ghana economy se be kone nim Takadi sumbu o se juman pa because one e ye the main export port of Ghana two e ye the center of the railway industry in Ghana. Three, uh, yeah, the center of the oil and gas industry in Ghana. <laughs> Second, the Takrade, the year of West Africa. The morning of 20th October 2012, so President Mahama with the need to seek God's face and to call for spiritual upliftment from above. The Grace Pentecostal Assembly of the Assemblies of God Church at Ifiakuma hosted the President. You can't be an empty vessel when you are a leader. You need to be a filled vessel and the feeling that you have to have is the feeling of the Spirit of God. That gives you discernment to be able to take the decisions that are right and that are in the best interest of your country. I notice as a leader that you get bombarded by all kinds of information and misinformation. And it is only when you are able to sort the wheat from the chaff, sort information from disinformation, that you are able to take the decisions that glorify the will of God.